Hi there. All righty. So I'm going to set you guys up with how you're going to use uh, the force sensors and a program on your computer called Vernier Graphical Analysis to help you actually test out your mechanisms. So I'm going to scooch this so that you guys can see my laptop a little bit better. Maybe I'll scooch that in a little bit more. This is weird. I've got talking laptops to each other. Okay. Um, this is the force sensor you guys are going to use. I'll have these set out so that you can grab a box. Uh, inside, we've got these lovely little force sensors. Um, they're USB, so I'm going to make sure that I have um, connectors in there that are USB to USB-C for you guys who have uh, the sophomore computers. A um, little cord. Oh, boy. Get ourselves untangled there. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. All right. Plug in. We're, we're just, we're actually, we're going through every little possible step, aren't we? Okay. All right. So got that little guy plugged in and take that, plug that into your computer and turn it the rat way. There we go. Okay. Now go down to your launch pad and you're looking for an icon. I'll hold this up here for you guys. It's, gosh, it looks like it's just plain white there, but there you can see the, the little rainbow dealies, this one right here. See? Doop. That is Vernier Graphical Analysis. I'm gonna open that. And when we do, oh, you are running graphical analysis on a, there's a Chrome package app, oh God. One second. Have another one. Oh, yeah, I do have another one. Okay. Um, I had a second one on here. I'm gonna try this one because it, there's there's like two different versions that got pushed out to all of your computers. So if one of them opens and it says you are running graphical analysis uh, as a okay, yes, yes. Go ahead and use the Bluetooth. As a Chrome packaged app, please download the native app for it, Mac OS. And so then close that little sucker and there should be another app in there on your computer that will work. Okay, um, now you've seen how that all gets connected. I'm gonna uh, record also a video, a screencast on here so that you can actually see it without, cause this, the glare is gonna be too much. Um, but what I wanna show you in real life is how you're actually using this part, okay? So let me start out with that. Um, so you've got lots of different uh, machines on here. The first one I think that's uh, pretty easy to utilize is the lever. Rotate this little guy around here. Okay, so for your lever, what you're going to need is some kind of a mass. They're hiding. Found them. Okay. You're going to need a mass and the hook on this guy. Um, if it's not, if it doesn't have the hook, there's a, there should be some other objects in that box so that you can put a hook onto your sensor. Um, what we want to do is to test the weight of the mass. And for that, um, I'm going to look at, actually, maybe I should screencast this while I'm doing that. That's a good idea. Let's pause for dramatic effect. Uh, do, 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 do. We're going to do record the screen, record. Hey, she's going. Okay, perfect. I'll be able to embed that in. Uh, so some things we're going to look for. Uh, we want to make sure that we're reading for our force uh, down at the very bottom. Click there, and we're going to change that from newtons to pounds um, because we're engineers. We're working with pounds. Um, in science class, maybe we'll work with newtons. But, I mean, we can use newtons anyway. It's just a ratio. Uh, I'm also going to zero that, so you just zero it. You want to do that between each of your tests. Um, you might also notice as soon as I turned this to the side, the force value actually increased a little bit. So I'm going to open that up and zero it again now that I'm holding it straight up and down. 
Um, I also like to use, I go up to, we don't need to collect data for like a period of time. What we really need is just the meter. So I'm going up to this, uh, yeah, 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 no, I'm not gonna try that. You can't see, you can't see anything. I'm gonna rely on this. Uh, so gonna select meter and then this allows me to find out how heavy that something is. So now I'm going to pop this on here and you can actually see the meter from this distance. That's not too shabby. Okay, um, so you'll see that that third decimal place never really balances out. That's fine. We're gonna try to round it off to that second decimal place. That's plenty. That's plenty precise for us. That, I mean, that's a hundredth of a pound. Good enough. We don't need to be out to the thousands of pound. Okay. What I'm seeing is about mm, 0 0.215, 0 0.214. I would say, because we're kind of settling on five, maybe six, I'm going to round that to 0 0.22 pounds. Okay. I think that's a reasonable value. Uh, also remember, it's a hundredth. If it's off by a hundredth of a pound, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay. So now I figured out that weight. It is, oh God, 0.22. Yeah, 0.22. We said 0.22. Where's 0.22? Yeah, 0.22. Okay, good. And now that I know that, always want to re zero. Um, now I'm going to put this little mass on the lever, and then I'm going to use my meter to determine how uh, much weight it, or how much force it takes, how much effort force it takes to lift it. So we'll hang this little sucker. This thing has like been bent. It's got to have been somebody with like a, yeah, that's like, we're going to, we, we, we got string. We got string for a reason. Got string for a reason. And scissors can, can take care of situation. Boop. There we go. Okay. Very good. And now I will just tie this little guy on here. Twist those a little bit. No, you cannot get the um, blowtorch out to cauterize the ends of the string. It will be fine. Get that little sucker tied on. Doop. And now that's gonna hang. And we're gonna see how much force does it take to lift this up. Okay, hold it in place. Holy Toledo! Would you look at that? It is 0 0.03. 0 0.03. So we are rounding off, again, two decimal places. That is only, oh, hold it steady. Yeah, 0 0.02, only two decimal places. That is 0 0.02 is only one significant figure, right? Because the 0, 0.0, that doesn't count, and then just the two. So that's only one sig fig. That's all we're talking about here. One or two sig figs, totally fine. Okay, so that's a ratio of our input force, our effort force here with the sensor. That was only 0 0.02 pounds, and our resistance force, the weight of this object, that was 0 0.22 pounds. It actually took us like a tenth of the, of the amount of force needed to lift this up using this lever, a tenth of the actual weight of this object to lift this lever. So that's telling me that our um, actual mechanical advantage here is about 10 to one. So our input is, for every one pound of input, we're getting about 10 pounds of output. That would be a mechanical advantage of about 10, okay? Uh, I didn't precisely do the math, but given that we're only dealing with one or two sig figs, probably about 10 is gonna be our actual mechanical advantage. 10 what units? No units. Remember, mechanical advantage doesn't have units, so just 10 is the correct value there, okay? Now, so that is for this example as what kind of a simple machine? Well, obviously a lever, but which lever is this first, second, or third class? Well, 
this, because the axle is in the middle right here, this is a first class lever. Even though this is on one side and we're way out here over here, it feels like it should be a second class lever because that's kind of, it's kind of that wheelbarrow idea of being way far out away from the pivot point. But because this is on the other side of the pivot point, it is still considered a first class lever. So first class levers can be all different kinds of ways. Now, obviously, if I want to make this into a second class lever, then I'm going to need to hang my mass on the same side as the side that I'm lifting on. So this would be where now I take my string, zoop, such fun sound effects. We're gonna hang this little sucker. I'm gonna just hang her, you know, how about like right here, that's good. There you go. And then take my little force sensor, okay. No, let's zero, but I'm gonna go ahead and zero it again, just for good measure. And stick this back out here on the end. Lift that up. Okay, so now we're seeing 0 0.08. Mm, ooh, hang on, let me hold it steady. This is a little tricky. I'm gonna have to say 0 0.09. I think that is, uh, considering how it's bouncing around a little bit, it seems like it's maybe on the higher end more of the time. So I'm gonna round it off to 0, uh, 0 0.09 pounds. Um, so it took us a little bit more uh, force there because these were a bit closer together, right? Um, so this distance was, was uh, a little bit bigger here. Um, this distance is still pretty big. So that would be a second class lever. Then if I switch things around, if let's say, okay, now even you could keep it even right here and just grab on to your lever, zero her out. Apparently four sensors are ladies, zero her out, uh, whatever. Okay, and I'm gonna hook that on here. And now pull that up. Okay. Look at that, we're at, trying to hold it steady. Yeah, that's like, point 0.9, yeah, probably right about point 0.9 uh, pounds. So it's actually taking more effort, more effort force to lift that object up than the actual weight of its ob of the object. That's what you're dealing with with a third class lever. So that's how you're gonna be doing your force measurements for all of these. The other thing that you need to do, you also need to get your um, effort and resistance distance uh, distances, your effort distance and your resistance distance, excuse me. To do that, I'm gonna need you to grab some rulers. There's some lovely rulers I'll, I'll pull the rulers off the, the slat wall. I'll grab them for you. Um, but you're gonna wanna measure those distances. And again, like comparing pounds to pounds and newtons to newtons, if you're comparing inches to inches, you're good. If you're comparing centimeters to centimeters, that's also fine. They just have to be the same unit, the two dimensions. I'd be happy with you going ahead and just using inches for this. That would be really, uh, I think, the best way to, to go about it. Um, you can imagine this, when we had this attached way over here, that was, this is probably about one inch from here to here. Uh, I would measure from the center of one of the, the squares because that's kind of, that's where like the force is going to be, uh, centered on. Like, where is, where is that force? Ooh, this one's, there we go. So where is that? Like, where, where is it actually hanging from is where you want to measure that from. So we would measure this was that original. Uh, uh, resistance distance, and then way out here had been our uh, effort distance. So you're going to be recording those values for each of the the different attempts that you that you are doing each of the different simple machines. 
Um, once you have that data from testing each of your machines, I'll show you what you're going to do in your notebooks.